<laughs> hey, good morning. Okay, so um, it is August the 26th, folks. Um, beautiful morning here in Bay St. Louis, and I am here with my Great friend, Cord, <laughs> secret April part, Bird, secret partner, <laughs> secret agent girls. <laughs> so here we are, silent partner. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> April, start by telling me what your address is. Forty thirty five Honshu Street, Bay St. Louis. Bay St. Louis, and mine is three one zero zero Roberson Road in Bay St. Louis. And the reason those are very important is because our champion. I'm going to start out by. I always give him a shout out, Tim Ladner, our representative, who stood up when our other representative didn't for us. Um, he got special legislation signed that has our two addresses on it. So I'm gonna start kind of at that side so you know all that it's taken to get to this point. But now we're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna let April tell her story, because you've heard some of mine, tell her story about um, this saga that she's been through as well, right? Am I right, April? Correct. Okay. So, very, very stressful. Very, very stressful. So she's going to start with, um, first tell me how many, the flood situation here, because I noticed that your house is definitely one of the we shorters. Are, we are 10 and a half feet up, and anyone that builds has to be 21 feet, mm -hmm. because when Katrina hit, this house was wiped out. Oh, gosh. Uh, we had 21 feet of, of water, mm. but unlike Louisiana, it washed out. Mm -hmm. It didn't stay, mm -hmm. not in a bowl. So um, I, um, I bought this house in 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I uh, purchased, I um, sent my check to FEMA uh, for my flood insurance. Mm -hmm in May of 21. And I got a letter from FEMA, and this is it. Here's the letter, and I'm gonna make a screenshot up for that. Okay. And it said I was eligible for a SWIFT grant, um, and that um, if I was interested, I should call this number. Okay, so pause right there, because I'm gonna do something for my phone so we won't get interrupted. Hold on. Keep that thought. Okay, so there was a number on the um, on the letter saying to call FEMA. Mm -hmm. uh, it had all the information on it, my uh, policy number, that type of thing was on a, a FEMA federal stationery. And this grant is pertaining to the SWIFT grant? Yes. The SWIFT current initiative grant that's not so SWIFT. Right. Um, it's rather slow. It's rather slow. Um, yes. But anyway, so I couldn't get to the phone fast enough to call mm -hmm. to say, how do I apply? Do I have to apply for the grant? How do I do it? Where's the application? Mm -hmm. So I was frantic. So no, they said, no, that's not how it works. You have to go through Bay St. Louis. So evidently they, um, they identified my house because it was completely destroyed mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in um, Katrina. And your grant, as to where mine, I have to pay 10%. You are 100% a hundred percent covered, right? Correct. So you got this letter, and then um, you didn't. You really didn't know what to do with it. So what? Who? Who? who kind of gave you help well, then to tell I, you where to go? Well, I when he said no, you have to go through Bay St. Louis. I said okay. So I called the city. Uh, Call the city, city hall. City yeah. hall. And, and then I could talk to the building department. Mm -hmm. No, that's probably a scam. Is what they, they call. called it a scam. And instead of um, acknowledging the Swift Current Initiative, they had no idea. They didn't know what it was. Don't right. headlights, and they called it a scam. Right. And I said, I don't think it's a scam because I has my my flood insurance um, policy number. Mm -hmm. But I said, okay. So then I thought, well, where where can I get some information? So I went to my insurance agent. And who's uh, your insurance agent? Cheryl Ladner. Okay. And she's had my home and my blood for years. Okay. And so she said, well, let me see if anybody would know who would have any information mm -hmm. about this federal grant. 
it would be either Mr. Chinichi, who is the, he's like the flood czar, the flood, flood plains plains manager, yeah, yes. our, and our city engineer. Yes, and, or she said, I'll call my daughter, who happens to be the city attorney, and her name is Heather Ladner Smith. So she emailed um, Mr. Chinichi while I was sitting in my office, and she said, I'll wait for him. But she said, let me pick up the phone and call Heather. Mm -hmm. So she called and Heather said, yeah, that there was something going on that they didn't have all the details. So I, I said, well, it's not a scam, right? And they said, no, it's not a scam. So that, good. that was good. good. I was happy with that. So then um, I kept going to Mr. Chinichi's office trying to get some information. They mm -hmm. didn't know anything. I got to be personal friends with the two girls that worked there. They were very helpful. But then it was like, you know, nobody knew anything. Mm -hmm. And that was in May, the May of 22. And here we are. You know, Way past two years later. Two years later. Yeah. But anyway, so um, that was, that was how, your how, how I got started in this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, surely, you know, the federal government, and uh, with all their wisdom, <laughs> <laughs> not, not, <laughs> nor the state, or, or the state, and the bureaucracy that you have to go through. It's brutal. It is. So and let me, very I'm, I'm going I'm to inject right here because I had uh, been beating the bushes and because uh, we had flooded twice within 10 months uh, on Roberson in Bay St. Louis. And I had been beating the bushes, and I was even calling FEMA, and I got the runaround with FEMA. Well, they finally let me know, well, actually, there's something called a Swift Current Initiative Grant, and but you need to call Janet Henderson with MEMA to, to follow up with that. So I did, and I did speak to Miss Henderson, and this is back in uh, April or May of 22, and she said, we sent out um, blanket emails to uh, all the floodplains managers and the higher ups in all the cities to let them know that they're, and this was on a Monday, that no, this this coming Wednesday, um, there's going to be, a, I don't know if it was a webinar or in-person seminar, but the, the representatives of the city had to be there to partake in this grant for their citizens. And because um, April had had somebody um, her agent called Jason and I had been bugging Jason to death and he did help me get identified as repetitive loss. Um, I guess we were the two on the radar, but I called them and they didn't know about it. And then they dug it out of their files, their email files and goes, yes, we got that. So on a Monday, I got the word from Jana Henderson and FEMA. On a Tuesday, I started reaching out to the city officials and the city engineer and on Wednesday was the seminar, so thank God that we were, uh, God put us in that time frame. So we did get identified, and then I believe it was in October of that year, we got a notice from our councilman, Josh DeSalvo, that we had been identified as being um, eligible for this grant, and then that's where the big saga continues. And so y'all you, have heard a bit about that but you can pick it up from there. I well, think. and then, you know, I would, I'd call different officials and no, we had, we don't know anything that we're working on and we're working on. But I, I just want to say I'm old and I don't have a computer. I, and I like it like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, they would not have even given me the time of day if it hadn't been for Tina. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. But I, um, it just, oh, if, you're not, if you're not um, savvy enough, um, you get lost in the shuffle. But when you have friends like Tammy, and, and she, you know, we have skin in the game. That's the key. Major skin. Major skin. Financial, emotional, time, everything in yes. this game. It's, it's so, so, so st stressful. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have high blood pressure. And sometimes when I go to those council meetings, I feel like the top of my head is gonna pop off. And you're a cancer survivor. I, I am a breast cancer survivor, 2005. It'll be 20 years in January. Go and from. But, like I say, I'm a fighter. She is and a fighter. I, I, I get down in the 
dirt. <laughs> That's what I told Tammy. I said, I don't want to be the spokesperson because she is more diplomatic and I want to get down in the dirt and roll around a little bit, but <laughs> that doesn't work. So I, I put all my faith in Tammy and she keeps me up to date. And I, I'm an old school, I like the hard copy. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm never well, gonna change. You know, <laughs> and, but we're in this together and um, the stress level is uh, something that needs to be addressed because when you're working and, and other people like Stacy over in Ocean Springs that I will be interviewing September 7th about her saga with this, although they didn't get it pushed to an award letter, it is, it is, it's unconscionable and it's unnecessary because Louisiana has figured out how to streamline this from federal to state to parish to city to their people. And we have, and they've allocated hundreds of millions of dollars for the FMA grants and the SWIFT grant. And so far, the money's released for the SWIFT grant are the FMAs for the last two years. And Mississippi has been a big old fat goose egg. And that's not okay. That is what we're here to change. Now, Mike Risa, the city clerk did say that if we can get these two grants pushed through, it'll open up the floodgates, no pun intended, for so many other citizens, right? But right now, we do feel like we've been stonewalled. Is that true? Filibustered by the city um, on many levels. Uh, we had a behind the closed door scene on October 30th of 23 with the city attorney and our councilman, Josh DeSalvo. And we were made to feel like this was impossible. And the, the quote of the city attorney before we left said, well, if this was legal, we'd do it, but it's just not legal. But if it was, we'd push forward. Well, then that's where Tim Ladner came in to work with us to get legislation to make it legal and not against Section 66. That's what this has taken. Well, the problem was when we went to that meeting, um, uh, the city attorney uh, also told us the the best avenue, because you said, what can we do to um, move this forward? And she said, you're gonna have to change the constitution. She did say that. Oh, she like, did say that. What? Mm -hmm. We, you have to change the constitution. That was busy work. Mm -hmm. so, and well, it was, it was also to make us feel like it was impossible. Impossible. But that's where I will go back in. I sent out then, I sent out 12 binders because Josh DeSalvo also said that we were probably going to have to get an attorney general's opinion mm -hmm. and legislation, right? And so I said, okay, we'll do both. And so I sent out a red binder, which I will show in another uh, video, to 12 officials around the state, including my city officials. Nobody would touch it except for Tim Ladner. My representative, Brent Anderson, wouldn't touch it, uh, nor would anybody in the city, nor would anybody on the council. But Tim Ladner did. And I will also say, I found out when we uh, had that behind closed door session, none of our other council members were alerted to the fact about any of this. They were not alerted to the fact that we had received award letters. When I presented it to them at another council meeting, just to stand up impromptu to speak, uh, they were doing headlights. And that is not fair to them because they're trying to do their due diligence for this city as well, and they were absolutely kept into the dark, into the dark for whatever reason. I don't know if it's, they don't wanna have to be the first one to crack this egg open. They don't, they're fearful. I don't know that, I, I'm not gonna try to read into that. I can just tell you the fact that they did not know, they did not know uh, anything about this. Now they do, and they're trying to get up to steam. I feel like if everybody would have been alerted to this from the beginning, and not try to get, I, I just a million times feel filibustered and stonewalled by this, as right. does April, as does Stacy in Ocean Springs and every, and the 14 other people that are waiting over there. And who knows how many more I'm gonna find out that tried to get this because they got a FEMA letter, right? But then they were crushed, absolutely crushed. And so um, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna let April have the last word on this, but before I close this uh, interview, I wanna say, if you have any similar story, if you received a FEMA letter about the MFA or about the Swift Current uh, Grant Initiative, the Swift Current Initiative Grant, and you were stonewalled, you were um, made to feel like it will never happen, I'm asking you to reach out to me. I will leave my phone number 
and my uh, email in the description of this interview, but please reach out to me. I will come to you. I will come to you and interview your story. I will, just like this, I will sit down at across from your kitchen table and let you have your story because folks, we have federal senators that now know about it. We have uh, our um, U.S. congressmen that now, now know about it. We have our state people that now know about it. I, and Tate Reeves, I know you know about it because you signed our legislation on May 13th that Tim Ladner put together. Uh, Stephen McCraney with MEMA, I know you know about it. You were appointed by Tate Reeves. And um, I, no, I, when I try to reach out to y'all as a citizen with this, it's crickets. Clayton French with MEMA, I know you know about it. It's crickets, and that is not okay. We may, it, it may, you may have to take a few. Uh, fiery darts for some women that have been through the ringer, but we're Southern, so you know you're going to have to do that. But but uh, stonewalling us and filibustering us from anywhere from the state level to the county level to the city level is criminal. It's criminal by neglect, and at least that's how we feel about it because we're on the receiving end, and I, I have been brutalized back and forth every way from Sunday to Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday, count all the days. And April has just been, this has been so stressful for her. She is on a fixed income. There is nowhere else for her to go. But we're citizens. This is taxpayer money that's being allocated that came out of our taxes, your taxes. So if you have a story, let us know. You got anything else to say, April? Well, I just want to say that it's it's very, very frustrating. But I, I think there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's not a train. <laughs> <laughs> And I think we're beyond the back and forth. I, I have 10,000 questions. Every time we go back to a council meeting, there's another question. And yeah. Not, we're muddying the water. We are muddying the waters. And then they did, well, for, I'm glad you said that. Um, the city attorney, they wanted us to give an updated estimate of what our project would cost. But when I've talked to grant admin companies, they should have been brought on board from jump. And they should have been the ones to ask these questions because every time the city steps in to do it, and they've admitted they don't know what they're doing. They admitted that they need a grant admin, but yet they still go in and do the things that the grant admin should have done. So I will speak to anyone out there. You do need a grant admin from jump. We have learned that because Cuts they out. know what to do. Cuts out yeah. all the the questions and, and all the minutia, all the naysayers. That's what it does. So well, hopefully, um, they. You know, the problem is, you know, when they did the open bid and they had six people that applied for the administrator mm -hmm. and this and that, and they whittled it down to three. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem is, we're in a, from according to all the meetings, um, a flood zone with Pennsylvania, which makes no sense. Yeah, we're in FEMA District 4? Four? Four, four, four. I think. Yeah. But... You know, we have people next door in Louisiana that do, do, they do this all the, all the time. time. And what's going to happen is going to they're going to have to fly in to check the site and everything from Pennsylvania. They so, made this as and look, as hard and this as is they what, can. it's from federal level on down. So I'm not right. pinning all this on Bay St. Louis. I think they were doe in headlights when they got right. caught with this. But That's still, what I think. Yeah. This starts from federal level on down. And now I have been in contact with Cindy Hyde Smith's office a lot. They are trying to do what they can, their due diligence, to get the homework done to figure out where this glitch is. So we're going to have to end it here. But I do want to say, if you have a story about a FEMA grant that FEMA contacted you about and it got stuck in the mud, please contact me. Well, this this always... they. It, this comes out after you pay your flood insurance uh, mm -hmm. for the year. So anytime you get any information from FEMA, read it because you might be eligible. You might be eligible. For a swift current yeah. grant. But then what we're going to do, we're going to coalesce as we the people, yes. right? High five. Yeah. We, we are the, the people. people. We the girls. <laughs> and we are going to make this happen not only for us. But for y'all, we are not going to stop this choo-choo train. I promise. This is a good train. This train is going to keep going. And the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train. It's just going to be what's going to bust open. So. Well, and we have to be the icebreaker. Yes, we have so to be the icebreaker. Somebody's got to do it. And we can't, we can't let the momentum go. Because 
I mean, we are very unlikely. I'm an artist. And, and, and April's just this amazing woman with an amazing story that's retired now. So, um, living on Social Security. Yeah, but and I, you know, I'm, it's horrible to get a letter saying you're eligible for X amount of dollars and you can't talk to for two it. years. But we're going to make sure y'all can. Yeah, we're yeah. not going to stop. So, keep, keep the faith going. Keep your hope going. And get this out to all your friends and family. Please, please like please. and subscribe this channel. Because we got to keep this going, guys. All right? Talk Thanks. to you later. Bye. Next will be good news. Yes. <laughs>